Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you 7 coding mistakes you might be doing in your c -sharp code and how to fix them. Now, how do I know that they're mistakes? Well, Microsoft told me and they told me in the form of analyzers. Now, in case you don't know, analyzers is a form of code that can inspect your own code as you're writing your code and give you suggestions. So if you get a warning squiggly line or an info or even an error, those can be analyzers. Now, those can be in different places. For example, your ID is one. Rider has some built-in analyzers of C Sharp, but now they can also be in the .NET SDK itself. And in .NET we're getting a bunch of those. So in this video, I'm going to show you seven of them and explain, well, what the problem is with each one of them and why the fix is the way it is in terms of performance, reliability, or maintainability. If you like a lot of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe. And for more training, check out my courses on domtrain.com. So let me show you what I have here. I have a console application over here. And as you can see, this is just a .NET 7 console app. It doesn't really have anything. And the reason for that is because I want to show you the suggestions show up as I upgrade to .NET 8 every time. So I'm going to leave it in .NET 7 and go to the program.cs. And the first thing I want to show you has to do with constants. Assume that I have just this class called constant magic and I have a process value that accepts an end. Now I can just call that like this over here and I can have a variable. So value is 10 and pass it down. So that is fine. However, what if I know as the person writing this, that this should be expecting a constant? Well, in that case, there's actually a new constant expected attribute and Microsoft uses that quite a bit actually internally. And by doing so, now we get nothing. I don't have any suggestion. I don't have anything, but this is not a constant. It will be a constant if I say const int, but before that, it is just a variable. So that doesn't really do anything. But if I go here and I upgrade to .NET 8, then as you're going to see when the analyzers kick in, and they will, now I have a warning saying that, hey, this argument should be a constant for optimal performance. This is one of the new analyzers, and we have the number of the analyzer over here. And by the way, if you want to make this uh, an error because you are being very, very careful, you can say warnings as errors and pass the code of the warning in there, and then that suddenly becomes an error. And in many teams, uh, warnings are treated as errors by default because they don't want to have even warnings. Now, if I go and I say that this is a constant and an integer, then the error goes away immediately because, well, I am passing a constant now. Now, there's something other very cool about this attribute. Over here, you can actually set a minimum or a maximum value for that value. So, for example, I can say that the minimum expected constant over here should be, let's say, 20 for some reason. And if I do that, then you get another error that says that the constant does not fit within the value bounds of 20 and whatever. And that is, by the way, an error because I have the analyzer treated as an error. If I remove that, then it is a warning to make it sort of backwards compatible with existing code. So if you have such a use case, that you should be expecting a constant, then something like this can actually help you. And this analyzer is marked as a performance one. So it's there just to help your application to be more performant. The next one is one of the, I think, many, many people actually have wrong in their code bases. And it has to do with the dot any method. So when you have an I enumerable of something, and in this case it is strings, then if you want to check whether that thing has elements, you might be tempted to use the dot any method of link to say, hey, if it does have any, then it does have element. And that is fine. However, in some cases, you might have a, a concrete type or a lower level type in your code. So in this case, I have an array of strings because I know that Anything I'm going to do in here is supposed to be dealing with an array. I don't want to have sort of the, it could be anything of the I enumerable. I know that it's an array and I want to deal with it as an array. And dot any here is actually pretty bad for performance. What you actually want to do is, well, I'm going to show you by increasing this project to a .NET 8 project and seeing what the compiler says. So now we have a suggestion over here, these four green dots, and the suggestion says, prefer comparing length to zero rather than dot any, both for clarity and performance. So that is a double situation. It is both for clarity and it is also faster. So what is the analyzer with a refactoring suggesting? Because in this case, we also have a refactoring. Well, it says use the dot length, which is a computed value. We have it and we can say that if it is not zero, then clearly the thing has elements. And if I go into the dot length of the array, then you're going to see this an extremely optimized operation using unsafe.as to get the raw ar array data and then the length of that. It is as fast as it really gets. But if you use dot 
any, then what's going to happen, and we're going to go into link here, is it's going to try to do some fancy stuff to detect what type of enumerable it might be. Then if it needs to, it's going to enumerate it. Can it get the count? Can it not? It has been optimized, but it still adds an extra operation. So what I suggest is use dot length. And if you have something like, for example, a list, so another sort of downstream type, you still have the same suggestion, but now it says count because the computed length of a list is actually on the dot count method, which is actually stored as a field. So do not use dot any when you're not dealing with the I enumeral interface. Try to use the downstream types already computed count or length value and compare that to zero. Now, the next one is a very interesting one. And the ones of you that have a keen eye for performance would actually be able to immediately see what the problem is here. But let's explain what this code does. So first we have a method that accepts some text and then it splits it on two different characters, the comma and the space. So if I go in here and I say splitter dot split text and I say Nick chaps us and then I don't know, year of birth or whatever, then we're going to get an array with Nick chaps us and 93 over here. So what is the problem with this? Well, let's go ahead and enable .NET 8 and C. You're going to see this suggestion here. Now, those of you who are aware of performance and memory and how all that works would know that having something like this is actually going to allocate a new array every time this method is invoked. And the problem with that is because more memory means more allocations, which means more garbage collection, which means slower application. But the suggestion actually says, as you can see over here, prefer static read-only fields over constant array arguments if the called method is called repeatedly and is not mutating the past array, which is actually the case. We don't plan to change the parameters in here. So if that is the case, then why don't you just extract it into a static read-only field, which makes sure that this will only be allocated once, maintained in memory, and reused, removing all the allocations associated with this operation. Of course, not with the splitting, you still need an array of strings back, but with the separation. This is another performance mark analyzer, and that's actually a practice you should be doing anyway, especially when the array is not meant to be mutated. You should be extracting and reusing as much as possible. So for the next one, let's take a look at the following. Let's say we have a database factory here, and I have a constructor, and I want to inject a connection string over here. Now, because this might be coming from dependency ejection, you don't necessarily control who calls the database factory. So you might want to check that this is actually not going to be null over here. So what you might be tempted to do is say, if connection string is null, then throw new argument null exception and pass down the parameter name, so name of connection string. And then if you want, you can customize the message. We won't do that here. And once you do that, you maybe have a private read-only string called connection string and you assign it here. So after the check, you say connection string. That's fine. Now there's actually two places you can take this. The suggestion you see here is coming from my idea. We're going to ignore that and we're going to go and increase it to a .NET 8 project. And the moment I do that, I have a suggestion here. And it says that use argument null exception dot throw if null instead of explicitly throwing a new exception instance. So if we go ahead and we use the refactoring, what's going to happen is it says take that code and change it to this code. This is actually marked as maintainability. Now, here's the interesting thing about this. Yes, this is Microsoft's suggested way to deal with this, but you can actually do the following as well. You can use writer suggestion to join the null check with the assignment. So you can have something like this. So try to assign it. And if it is null with a null coalescing operator, then throw a new argument null exception. Which one do you prefer? That's the question I have to you. Would you go for this or would you go for the Microsoft suggested one over here? I really want to know your thoughts. So the next one is a bit complicated. I'm going to try and make it simple. I've talked about this issue in the past, but in this case, we actually get an analyzer built in to sort of guide you towards that. So what we have here is an abstract parent class that has a virtual method called do something. And then we have a child class over here, which is sealed. It could also not be sealed. It won't really change the suggestion. But in this case, I know it's not going to go anywhere after the child. So I'm sealing it. And then I have this example class where I have a parent and that parent is allocated to the child. And then this class has a trigger method that calls the parent objects do something method, which both parent and child share. Now the C-sharp compiler is fairly smart, but it needs a bit of help to be able to optimize your code as much as possible. And in this case, we're in a pretty bad situation because we know that the actual type we're going to use here 
is the child type, but we're using the parent as the object for no apparent reason, no pun intended. This means that this code will perform a virtual call into the do something method, and the compiler cannot optimize this as much as it possibly could. So what we're going to get in .NET 8 if we increase that is a suggestion over here on the parameter saying that change the type of field A from parent to child to improve performance. Because yes, it will actually make a small difference. And if you do it consistently, it can be something that amounts to something noticeable. Now with this analyzer, there is no refactoring, so I cannot just say change it and it will magically change, but I can take the child, I can push it, to the parent here, and now nothing changes with my code, it's the same thing, but the compiler will see this and be able to optimize the call even better. Now this does not change, like I said, if this wasn't sealed, if it wasn't sealed, as you'll see, I still have the suggestion, but if this class was sealed, you also get better performance in general. So if you're in this situation, you can use the child and this will help the performance of your application. For the last one, let's say we have an array over here containing one value, it is the integer, and let's say we want to cast it to some other type. So let's say I want to cast this array of integers over here to a string. Now, I'm getting a warning over here called suspicious call. There is no type in the solution which is inherited from both int and string. But this is not a .NET specific warning. This is actually a writer warning. And if it was a .NET one, you would see the code in front of it. So we can just ignore this call. Yes, my idea will warn me, but... C sharp will not. But if I go ahead and I now say net 8 and upgrade to .NET 8, I'm getting a full line here saying that, hey, what the hell are you doing? This can't possibly be a thing. You cannot cast, as you're going to see here, the type int is incompatible with type string and cast attempts will throw an invalid cast exception at runtime. This is the type of thing that I would actually move directly into a warning because this will definitely throw an exception. There is nothing that will actually make this null throw an exception. And this isn't unique on the cast method as well. This can also be the case if you use the of type method. So if you say that this of type string, you're going to get the exact same error. Hey, the call will always result in an empty sequence because type int is incompatible with type string. And that about sums up all the suggestions that Microsoft is making for now in .NET 8. However, I do have a bit of a call to action to you because I do like to bring visibility to those things. If you want to help the .NET team give us more analysis there is this issue on github i'm gonna put a link to it underneath the like button so if you want to check it out there's some new analysis requested over here or things like prefer value tuple over tuple or report insufficient use of sets and so on and so forth so if you want to help dotnet get new analyzers then please be my guest check this out many of them are up for grabs and if you want to try to write one for the first time that's an excellent way to get into helping .NET. But now I want to know from you, how many of these did you know and how many of these did you do wrong? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching and as always, keep coding.